Bots are a problem in RuneScape, they always have been, but to think that some of these bot farms still exist is quite ridiculous. In this video we're going to take a look at RuneScape 3's biggest bot farm, so whenever you're ready grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. Now the Elite Dungeon bug might have been fixed, but Elite Dungeon 3 bots are still very real and still exist in the game. Now the reason these are so damaging and why I want to cover them first is because they get alkaballs, items that never lose their value and always will bring gold into the game. Not only that, but these bots receive physical coins and they generate money that is brought into the game because Elite Dungeon 3 GP farming also brings regular GP into the game, but they also bring cannibals into the game, rune arrowheads, uncut gems, raw swordfish, reef relics, and so on. After they run out of food or finish their run, they teleport back to the Aemonheim using the Ring of Kingship, and then they just bang and keep going. There's nothing that's really done against these bots, or Jagex is planning to ban them all in one big wave. I'm not entirely sure, but these have been around since the release of Elite Dungeon 3, I'm pretty sure, because GP farming is really good money and experience, and once these bots actually level up to level 75 magic, they start using a polypore staff, which is better and will increase their GP per hour. As you can clearly see, some bots are using polypore sticks and some others with lower stats are using mystic air staves. Now I have reason to believe that Jagex does actually ban these bots because there's a lot of them with mystic air staves, there's a couple that are using a tier 60 weapon and only a few with polypore sticks now, which means they're fairly fresh as the experience is really good in Elite Dungeon 3. I really hope they'll crack down on these bots because the amount of bots that are doing this is just insane. Even if they are fresh bots and they are getting banned, they need to be stopped. I kind of wish I could shoot these bots with the banhammer, but instead I think I'll play today's sponsor, Frag Pro Shooter. Frag Pro Shooter is a free-to-play shooter game developed by OBB. It's one of the best free-to-play shooter games on the mobile market and has over 60 million players with 1 million, yes, 1 million active daily users. That is really impressive. The goal of this game is to destroy the enemy's bunker as quickly as possible. The first one to take the bunker down wins the game. In this game, you can collect over 80 different characters to use and play against other players all over the world. Frag knows how important frequent updates are and they are on top of it with the most recent one being the Zap Girl character, a character that evolves around, well, you guessed it, electrocuting players. Her special ability literally allows it to smack down on all that core on the battlefield to take down any on close. Frag currently has three different main game modes, Payload, Street Frag, and 2v2. I personally like 2v2 as you can team up with one other player, choose three characters from a random deck of six, and your partner receives the other three, and then you can take on two other real players in real time. If you are looking for an exciting and engaging mobile shooter experience, this is the game for you. Click my link in the description below to receive a special reward consisting of 1 golden chest, 500 coins and 50 diamonds. Now a slightly hidden place for bots is the Imperian Citadel Excavation Site where you can find material caches for Armadillo in Yellow, Ethereum Alloy and Quintessence. Now the funny thing is, these bots are obviously bots because no player in their right mind would sit around at this spot excavating these caches at that archaeology level without any other stats leveled up. I don't think it's very likely that an alt account would be farming these caches simply because you can get way more money per hour farming caches in more public areas where players still don't go at a higher archaeology level. I've even seen a bot here with the 120 archaeology cape and that person had the audacity to actually wear the cape and some other cosmetic outfit to seem legit. Actually, I have seen quite some bots here wearing the 99 archaeology cape to seem more legit, but if you had 99 archaeology you could make way more money doing archaeology somewhere else and getting higher level materials, but you know, they're sitting here which is obvious that they're trying to bot and stay hidden. Now you might be thinking, hmm, this might be one of the only places where archaeology is botted because it's hidden. Well, in plain sight in literally every free to play world, you'll find a cluster of bots training archaeology and getting those low level materials for money. And it isn't just a handful of bots, no, Caradet in free to play worlds is heavily botted by bots, and these bots have been in the game since archaeology's release because I remember seeing them them when playing on a free-to-play account to get some money. Now these bots probably won't be making that much money per bot, but because there are literal hundreds of them, I think the player running these bots is making absolute bank. Like, it, it can't be that hard to make a bot for this either, because all you need to do is destroy artifacts and bank the materials and that's it. You just keep going. And just look at this world I found over here. Just look at how many bots are in this exact world. Look at that.
And the worst thing of all is these bots can pretty much be made unlimitedly. All you need to do is make a new account, skip the tutorial, go and do the archaeology tutorial, and you can go ahead and farm these materials. Honestly, it makes me wonder how little free-to-play players are left, because there are so many bots in free-to-play worlds. In member worlds, you won't really find that many, and most of the members will be legit players. I'll cover a few in just a second. But in free-to-play, you have clay mining bots, which mine the clay, they turn it into soft clay at the well, and then they bank it in birth rope. And there's a lot of these in a bunch of free-to-play worlds as well. Not all of them, but a large portion of the free-to-play worlds, including the legacy combat worlds, will have these bots, at least five or so per world. If you're wondering what these bots are making, they're making about 25k in inventory, and they probably take around two minutes to complete one run. That is, if they don't break and keep teleporting to birth rope, which is pretty funny. This bot straight up kept teleporting to the same spot for like five minutes. I'm not even kidding you guys. It just kept teleporting to birth rope over and over. Hilarious. Now, the Dwarven Mines in Free-to-Play have quite the amount of bots, including smithing bots that are probably smithing rune arrowheads, but what's funny is the mining bots seem to have increased over time. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some legit players that mine here in Free-to-Play for money, as Luminite and Rune Wars are fairly good money, and it's really AFK. But the amount of players here with weird names and just having mining leveled up are clear indicators that these are bots. Let's be entirely honest here, they're running from the exact same location to the exact same spot, mining for the exact same amount of time and then teleporting out to bank. Some of these wards literally have 25 bots on one single stack of ore. Now because the mining and smithing rework happened, ores are no longer competitive and as many players can hop onto one ore as possible, which is obviously beneficial for AFKers but also for bots. Just, it's actually insane how many of these bots are actually on free-to-play worlds. I'd say they have increased in terms of numbers over the years. I really do, and I used to hang out in certain free-to-play worlds with players and just help them out and stuff, so th there's definitely more bots in here than a few years ago. 100%. Now, in previous videos, I covered the absurd amount of accounts using a Sourdome and Gold Sword and farming Frost Dragons for Frost Dragon Bones. Now, I'm not entirely sure if these are bots or not, or Venezuelan Gold Farms, because I do have evidence of them actually talking, which I'll show you in just a second, but they get literal millions of experience here. They get all the way up to 200 mil Constitution experience, which is just insane. Now, some of them have a habit of using a Talon Beast. I was like, why are they using a Talon Beast at Frost Dragons? And the simple reason they are using these is so that they can actually just finish off the frost dragon when it's using its reflect mechanic without taking any damage. Now, like I said, they could well be gold farmers, which is honestly a really sad situation there in Venezuela, I'll be honest with you guys. Now, my buddy Soft Chicken actually caught these accounts drop trading GP to a certain main account. I have reason to believe they do this so to avoid Jagex detection system. If they were legit accounts, why would you drop trade the GP to another account for the wilderness? I mean, if you're a member account, you don't really have the trade limit anymore, so that doesn't make sense. And one of the accounts here actually replied back to him and talked to him, so that's why I think they might be gold farmers. Now the next location and final location of this video are Corrupted Scorpions and Scarabs, which are one of the most popular AFK money-making methods. Now I think a lot of these accounts right here are actually alt accounts, so they're using aggression potions and not per se bots, but they could very well be bots as well. They all seem to use the same weapon, being a passive Sourdome and God Sword, and they all use these cosmetic overrides, which are free and cheap, to seem like legit players. It's almost always the cosmetics you got for free for just literally logging in, and to me it just seems like the trend you can see with other botting locations where they try and use cosmetic outfits to seem like real players, because cosmetics equals real players, right? Because we like them scuffed outfits. I suppose. With these accounts at these locations, I just don't really know for sure. They could very well be alt accounts. I mean, there's a guy that streams in like AFKs with 50 accounts at Spiritual Warriors, and that's a legit player as far as I'm concerned on stream anyway. It's, it's, I mean, it's very possible to play on 20 accounts at once and simply just click your aggression potion every five minutes. It's not hard at all. You just need to have the accounts. That's the hard part. Let me know what you think about these bots specifically, or these accounts specifically, in the comments down below. And with that being said, it's time to start up my archaeology bot farm empire.